Okay, glad to meet you. I'm from Rome. My name is Alex. I write for uh, Horror Italia 24 here. And um, I really like your works, everything from your first scripts uh, until men now. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, leading to my first question um, about your sources of inspiration uh, for men, obviously, because I think there's a perfect, mi a perfect mix between classic and modern horror in this film. Hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, so, you, so the sources of inspiration in terms of other films? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, I guess um, uh, an obvious film would be something like The Wicker Man, because yeah. I, you know, I first watched that when I was a teenager and it made a big impression and it kind of, it sort of put in my mind the idea of this genre, which is called folk horror. Um, and I think probably for me uh, in horror movie terms, um, uh, one of the biggest influences is actually, uh, I mean, it's, it's convenient because it's an Italian movie, but it's Suspiria um, yeah. because it, it's, it's partly to do with, it's to do with lots of things actually, but Suspiria is kind of, um, it, has, it has a kind of surrealism in it, which I, I sort of speaks to me in filmmaking terms, much more than something like The Wicker Man. Uh, uh, and, is also very bold, particularly for me, obviously very famously with the use of color, um, but also uh, um, music, the, the score. Um, and, and when I watch Men, uh, or, or when I was working in it, and I was looking at the very strong reds and the very strong greens, and also the score, it, it was, I could sort of feel Suspiria in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. turning around. Um, mm -hmm. But then there's other things as well, you know, like th there's there's a shot in in Men of of a camera moving very fast towards uh, the uh, Jesse Buckley, who's outside a house, and she backs into the house and slams the door, and and really that sort of could be a shot from The Evil Dead in a way. So. It, it, <laughs> There's films that they just sort of float in my head, but pro probably in a way, the biggest influence would probably be Suspiria. Perfect, okay. And then I noticed a constant in your um, script uh, is the concept of Deus Ex Machina. Uh, therefore, um, linked to the Greek tragedy. And um, do you think it is also present in men? So in your last film? What Greek tragedy? Uh, yeah, the, the, like the Deus Ex Machina concept. You know, um, uh, what, what I think is, you, you know, by just simply because uh, I'm a I'm a European writer working with a set of kind of European Western influences, it's kind of inevitably there. I I think that it's it's a little bit like. Um, Someone who, if somebody watched Apocalypse Now and they were influenced by Apocalypse Now, they would also be being influenced by uh, Conrad, Heart of Darkness, even if they didn't know they were being influenced by Heart of Darkness because Apocalypse Now is effectively a, a, a modernized version of Heart of Darkness. So, so I kind of think, uh, yes, the answer is yes, but it's almost impossible to avoid. Yeah, fine. Um, there's also a huge uh, home invasion element in men um, and the, the work you've done with the atmosphere is impressive in the movie, in the film, uh, sorry my English, and, um, yeah. uh, <laughs> and you already have, uh, did you already have the uh, location in mind when you were writing the script? Uh, I didn't have the exact location, but I had I, I had a very precise idea of the location because I know that part of England very well. I know the countryside and the landscape and the kinds of houses. Um, so we had to 
it, it actually strangely made it quite a difficult film to find the location for because it was so exact that anything that was only half right was was like not right at all. It, it had to sort of be right. completely right or it was completely wrong. Um, so I didn't I didn't know that place, but it was I remember it. It was it in comparison to films I've worked on in the past. It was it was not easy finding that place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I noticed after uh, watching your films, and my personal favorites are uh, Annihilation and um, and Men are my two favorites of yours. You. Uh, I noticed that the um, original and therefore innovative style that you try to bring in to cinema in uh, um, some way. And so I'm curious to know about your future projects and uh, if you already have a new film coming up. I don't know. Uh, I I just finished shooting a film when when Men was released. I was actually filming um, uh, a movie uh, in Atlanta in in America. Um, uh, I I finished shooting that like uh, just over two weeks ago, and um, and I'm I'm now editing it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've got that project which I'm working on at the moment, and I think I'll be working on it until. Uh, early next year, I, I would mm -hmm. imagine that's when I'll be finished. And then after that, uh, no plans. Okay, per um, then talking about view viewers among the new generations, I'm, I was curious, uh, um, how do you think they react uh, to films like Men? Um, and how do you think the horror genre uh, will evolve in the future? It's, it's... Um, to be honest, I, I have no idea how people react to it because I'm I keep pretty separate really from uh, from a lot of the world really and and mm. that kind of thing. I'm not on social media and I don't have any kind of uh, sort of access to people's responses in the way that people who are familiar with social media have a kind of instant call and response feedback. Uh, that they get, which which I I don't have. Um, I'm very happy to not have it. Um, uh, in terms of the future of the horror genre, my, my personal feeling is that um, as a genre, it, it's it will always be uh, safe um, because uh, because I think there's a kind of need for it. I, I I'm I'm not. Sure, like if I was a psychoanalyst, maybe I'd be able to explain why there's a need for it. But I think it's just uh, it it's it just answers or addresses. Maybe it doesn't answer, but it addresses um, some kind of question that people have inside them, even if they don't know what the question is. You know, and mm -hmm. um, uh, I also think it has. It has another thing that always keeps it healthy, which is that filmmaking is uh, difficult and expensive and it requires other people to give you money and you, you have to persuade people to give you money. And horror films can be made very cheaply. Um, it's difficult to make uh, a space, you, you know, a movie set in outer space cheaply. You can kind of you can kind of do it, but it's it's pretty difficult. Um, whereas you can you can make a really sort of perfectly accomplished horror movie in one building with four people, and so it's it's often it's often a genre that people go to for their first movie or their second movie. And so, and I think that keeps it alive because you always have young filmmakers. Uh, entering into the genre for that reason. Oh, and since you mentioned uh, Suspiria, that it's one of my favorites, uh, obviously, because I'm also because I'm Italian. Uh, is there another Italian horror film uh, that you really liked? I mean, not the best, uh, someone that you really like to rewatch and uh, and that impressed you in some way. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I if I stop to think about it. Um, Maybe um, the the thing about uh, Argento is that he's such a big figure that he he kind of dominates the landscape a little bit. 
I mean, not not just in Italy, he dominates it kind of everywhere. Yeah, right. And so um, th there isn't, no, there's not one that particularly comes to mind. Uh, what about, uh, do you like uh, films by Lucio Fulci or uh, uh, sure. direct? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, but, but not, not in the way, right, but, right. But, but I think, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But, but the, the thing about Suspiria is just the way it speaks to me is very particular. It just right. sort of pushes, it just pushes a button. So there's lots of films I can admire or, or filmmakers I can admire. Um, but there's something about that one that's on a different level. Right. For me, just, just yeah, I mean, that's a masterpiece. It's, that it's, one is a masterpiece, really. It's subjective, you know. Okay, I don't know if I have time for a quick question. I'm gonna, sure. uh, it's just about um, A24. If you have, um, it, there is a film or a director that you that impressed you uh, more in A24. Uh, well, actually, there's lots, but but the one the one that really has impressed me is um, Eggers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, he, he's, he, you know, there's, there's a thing, um, it's almost like he gives me a sense of, uh, relief in a way, because, um, uh, I, I feel like I've been working in film for quite, quite a long time now. It feels like a long time. And, um, and quite, to be honest, what often happens is you watch films and you think, oh, that's such shit or, um, oh my God, how boring, I can't believe how clumsy that is or how, how kind of uh, illiterate it is or whatever it is. And, and you can start to feel that you're jaded and cynical and maybe just uh, mean-spirited. Maybe you're just mean-spirited. Maybe actually these films are good, but you're just a mean-spirited person. And so you start to get a bit kind of depressed. And then someone like Eggers comes along and you think, oh, no, no, no. Uh, like you're just waiting for the right, <laughs> right. The right movie. So, so it's, it's sort of, it, uh, I remember watching particularly the lighthouse mm -hmm. and finding such a sense of pleasure in how brave it was and how original and um, sort of free thinking. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he, he would be, he, he would be the one that came to mind. Um, for me. Perfect. Okay, that was it. And uh, thank you cool. very much. Grazie in Italian. And it was a real pleasure to meet very you, good. Alex. <laughs>